In a world where people are losing their minds, who will be the voice of sanity, of logic, of rationale, of morality, and truth? This podcast is looking for like-minded people to stand up to the insane and be real. The Recovery Atheist Podcast is calling you to step forward and be counted. Welcome to the Voice of Change. Welcome to the Recovery Atheist Podcast. Hi, my name is Jenny. I'm a sophomore, and this is for all three of you. Can you say in one sentence or less what... (laughs) Um, You know what I mean. Can you say why America is the greatest country in the world? Diversity and opportunity. Lewis? Uh, Freedom and freedom. So let's keep it that way. Well, the New York Jets. (laughs) No, I'm going to hold you to an answer on that. What makes America the greatest country in the world? Well, Lewis and Sharon said it. Diversity and opportunity and freedom and freedom. I'm not letting you go back to the airport without answering the question. Well, our Constitution is a masterpiece. James Madison was a genius. The Declaration of Independence is, for me, the single greatest piece of American writing. You don't look satisfied. One's a set of laws and the other's a declaration of war. I want a human moment from you. What about the people? Why is America not the greatest greatest country in the world? Professor, that's my answer. You're saying... Yes. Let's talk about... Fine. Sharon, the NEA is a loser. Yeah, it accounts for a penny out of our paycheck, but he gets to hit you with it anytime he wants. It doesn't cost money. It costs votes. It costs airtime and column inches. You know why people don't like liberals? Because they lose. If liberals are so fucking smart, how come they lose so goddamn always? Hey! And with a straight face, you're gonna tell students that America is so star-spangled awesome that we're the only ones in the world who have freedom? Canada has freedom. Japan has freedom. The UK, France, Italy, Germany, Spain, Australia, Belgium has freedom. So 207 sovereign states in the world, like 180 of them have freedom. All right. And yeah, you, uh, sorority girl, just in case you accidentally wander into a voting booth one day, there's some things you should know. And one of them is there is absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. We lead the world in only three categories. Number of incarcerated citizens per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending, where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are allies. Now, none of this is the fault of a 20-year-old college student, but you nonetheless are, without a doubt, a member of the worst period, generation period ever, period. So when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yosemite? Sure used to be. We stood up for what was right. We fought for moral reasons. We passed laws, struck down laws for moral reasons. We waged wars on poverty, not poor people. We sacrificed, we cared about our neighbors. We put our money where our mouths were and we never beat our chest. We built great big things, made ungodly technological advances, explored the universe, cured diseases, and we cultivated the world's greatest artists and the world's greatest economy. We reached for the stars, acted like men. We aspired to intelligence. We didn't belittle it. It didn't make us feel inferior. We didn't identify ourselves by who we voted for in the last election, and we didn't didn't scare so easy. (laughs) 
We were able to be all these things and do all these things because we were informed by great men, men who were revered. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. America is not the greatest country in the world anymore. Enough? Well, hello, everybody. The Recovery Atheist here. I want to welcome you to another episode of the Recovery Atheist Podcast. Um, lots of stuff on my mind. Lots of stuff that's been going on the last couple days. Um, now that we have a new president that's in office. You know, I've been just, I've been hearing a lot of stuff. Um, I've been hearing a lot of stuff about America the Great, uh, that we're the best country in the world. Um, I think by now we need uh, to start waking up (laughs) and realizing that that is not the case. And I'll go over a few of it pretty much today. I just want to talk about where the state of our country is. Um, Today is my 45th birthday. Thank you for coming on the show and and listening to my show on my birthday. But I've been around the block a few few years now. 45 years. And I remember a country that was a lot better than what it is today. Doesn't mean there's not good things about this country, uh, about America, but there's a lot of bad things right now that seem to stick themselves out even more than when I was growing up and in the past. I'm sure you see it. I don't think my listeners are are stupid or ignorant or anything like that. I think most of us can tell that life is a little bit different than what it was 20 years ago. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? What does that mean? What has changed? What is there? I remember 20 years ago, just things being a lot more simpler, safer, uh, more honest. I don't know. I remember growing up as a kid, you know, and I know some of you out there are my age to so remember this, that the thing was is if you were out playing with the neighborhood kids, and that's a difference right there in its own right. Back when I was growing up, you played with the neighborhood kids. Today, that's not the case. <laughs> You've got to have uh, play dates <laughs> at one of each other's homes. It's got to be organized. Back in the day, we would just get on our bikes and fucking go get into whatever trouble we could. Not the way it is today. I remember growing up, it was, you had to be home by the time the street lights came on. Just before dark, you had to be home. Um, I remember, you you know, look, look at, look at some of the, the, the most popular movies ever. Some of them. Stand By Me. Uh, Goonies. Um, You look at movies like that and you see how it was about kids. uh, The movie It with the kids in the the Stephen King book. Um, Kids in those times, we would all just get together and hang out and do our thing and have fun. Not the way it is today. Today, kids are watched like hawks. They um, they are not allowed to do things like they used to. And then we wonder why these same kids um, are isolating in the rooms, doing nothing but playing video games, and we can't get them to do anything or go out and get a job or work or this or that or go outside when we haven't really... We, we've had them under a bubble to where they haven't been able to go out and do that. 
I remember in the day, this is going to be a remember in the day. I remember in the day when you didn't have to have all your doors locked. You remember that? Before all the fear and the media got involved. Now don't get me wrong, some of the horrendous crimes that were happening in her life definitely played a role in that. Um, I was just watching a documentary on Netflix, and I suggest that you check it out. It is very good, called The Night Stalker. Um, Richard Ramirez. And yeah, I mean, that terror that he was bringing down on Los Angeles would make people want to lock their doors. I get that. So, as time has gone on with the media blowing that up more and more and more, and just, I I think a lot of it has been because of our media, okay? I remember growing up in a time where cable wasn't readily available. In fact, when you were getting cable, we were so excited. Um, And I know my mom and dad, they listen, and I know they would remember this. When we would have cable ordered, oh, they're coming Thursday. Oh, we get cable on Thursday. We get cable on Thursday. Um, not the way it is today, is it? But back then, that was what it was about, was getting cable. And our cable that we had was on the little, you know, knob. You turn the knob to the channel of what you wanted. Um, that's It, it wasn't remote. <laughs> Um, but since our, our media has changed, since we've started streaming more and more, uh, since we have more access to news, what has happened? What is, what is the news really all about? I mean, honestly, every time I, you know, I don't watch the news much. Mainly what I watch the news for lately anyway, has been getting information on Trump Uh, on the election and what is he trying to do now to try to cheat in the election Uh, that's pretty much all it's been there for for me over the last few months but normally or the riots back in the day but uh, for me I really don't care um, because what I see is nothing but fear it's a very much a fear based It's just all about fear. It's all about what the media can cause in fear to us. And then we wonder why nowadays everything we're afraid of. We wonder why our kids are afraid of everything. Can't even walk out of our house. You know, why is this? Um, so back in those days, you didn't have to lock your door like you do today. Um, back then you didn't have to worry about walking down the street at night that you're going to get, uh, mugged or raped or killed or kidnapped. Today, you just don't know. You can be in one of the, the nicest neighborhoods in the world and you just... You just don't know. So, what makes this country the best? I hear it all the time from people. It's just one of those things where we're the best country in the world, we're this, we're that. Sorry, folks, but we're not. This whole tobacco with the uh, with the election and everything and the way Trump has spent this last year with coronavirus and what he's done with that other countries and I know this because I'm friends with people who live in the UK in Ireland and France in Australia Canada and they're laughing at us they think this whole situation is a joke they cannot believe where this has gone with Trump. 
So we had the inauguration yesterday. And I was at work, uh, which is nice for me because I work in a booth. So I'm by myself. I was able to watch the entire inauguration festivals. uh, And it was great. Um, I loved it. Lady Gaga was amazing. Um, Jennifer Lopez did a wonderful job. Don't know about Garth Brooks. Never have been a country thing, country guy, so I don't know about that. But that that uh, African American woman, the the young woman that gave her her poem, absolutely amazing. It was, uh, in my opinion, very inspirational. And when I look at all of it and how it went, and seeing Mike Pence leave with his wife in the car, and seeing. Uh, Camara just kind of be like, or Camilla be like, ah, oh, bye, see you later, bitches. Uh, it was amazing. Um, that being said, it felt like finally we've got we we might be able to get some change back and do what we need to do, right? Get this world back, this country back on track. It was amazing. But at the same time, as I'm watching this, I'm I'm getting goosebumps, and I I stood up for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and our national anthem, and I'm proud. I am. I'm proud to be an American um, for what this country has stood for in the past and what we hopefully will stand for in the future. But right now, there's not a lot to stand on. See, yesterday I'm going through Facebook and I'm looking at all the comments on things and it's like, we're the best country in the world and blah, 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 blah. What makes you say that? I think the audio I had at the beginning of this uh, pretty much sums it up. We, We don't lead in categories that really when you look at our country and what we represent and the money that we have in this country you would think that we would be number one in those categories but we're not literacy education um, hosp- you know hospital care medications um, all of that stuff diversity you would think that we would be number one in these categories Instead, we're number one in incarceration. Number one in people that believe in angels or religion and God. And we're number one, which I, for me personally, find hilarious. We're number one in defense spending over the top 26 behind us combined so that the 26 countries from two on behind us we spend more money than those countries combined and 25 of them are our allies only one of them i think that's north korea only one of them is a country that spends more or 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 is not one of our allies that way So why do we feel we need to spend that much money? Well, it's a money-making business. It's how these politicians fill their pockets. We live in a country that is very selfish. We, We live in a country that it's all about me and how I can benefit from the situation. And the people that have the power are the ones that are benefiting. Us poor people, we don't matter. Which I find hilarious when I hear you know that being said, that without the poor people, without us people here at the bottom working some of these jobs and doing what we do, the rich people on top, living in their cushy homes and having the job, you know, having the life that they have, would not have the life that they have. They would have to go to a different country to be able to get it which, you know, is the whole idea of what I'm talking about. Is this country the best country in the world? And again, it's not. (sighs) 
how how can anyone say this is the best country in the world when they've never stepped a foot outside of it? And I mean, I say that for myself. I'm not saying it like I'm some special person. I've been to Mexico a couple of times. I've been to the Dominican Republic, obviously Canada. I know Canada has better ways of doing things than what we do. If Trump would have got in there another four years, there would have been a very good chance. I mean, I'm already pretty much up here in Duluth, Minnesota, as close as you're going to get to Canada as you can. Um, It was at the point where if we would have got Trump another four years, I was seriously considering moving to Canada and just getting a citizenship up there. There's many things about Canada. I mean, they have their faults, but there's many things about Canada that are so much better than here. So to sit there and say that we're the best country is ignorant. Go to England. Go to France. Go to Ireland. Go to Australia. Go to some of these countries. Germany. Go to some of these countries and tell me. The Netherlands. Tell me that they have it so much worse than what we have it. When you look at the overall stats, when you look at, how about crime, murder, violence, sexual assaults, rapes, kidnappings, all of that. Right here in this country is where the base is. This is, this is, this in America is where it's the worst. And I mean, that's with all the cartels and everything. Why do we walk around thinking that we're the best? We got a lot of work to do, my friends. We got a lot of work to do to be able to walk around and act that way. And then we wonder why other countries laugh at us or or that they make fun of us or they just totally will have nothing to do with us because we're so full of ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that we can't get better and become the best country in the world. I'm not saying that, but we've lost. We've, we have lost our way. And I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm speaking out of line to that. I think there's a lot of people that would agree with me. We used to stand for something. We used to be looked at, you look at World War One and Two. we used to be looked at as the country to come in and be the savior. Do you think any country really wants us to do that today? Seriously. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think... A lot of countries would like that. I think a lot of countries today are like, we'll take care of it on our own. You're just going to complicate things and compound everything that we're going through. Remember when you used to be able to hang out with your neighbors? Remember when you, you know, you'd have a... a, cook out with your next door neighbor and get to know him. I remember growing up, we had a, a guy that lived behind us there in Wisconsin Rapids, uh, name of Jeff Brown. And uh, he was he was a great guy, good friend of our, our families. He would work on our cars um, when we needed repairs done and we could do it cheaply. He would help us out and he was just a good guy, right? He was just a good guy. And uh, we used to do things like that, eat food, cook out. He'd be invited to our church events and he would come. And, um, 
I just, just don't see a lot of that anymore. You might have some friends of yours that you spend time with here and there, but a lot of times people don't even know their neighbors anymore. You will be like literally within 50 feet of a neighbor and don't even know what their fucking first name is. I don't. I don't know what my neighbor's names are. And what's sad about it is I really don't care. I don't care to. We, we live in a world today that that's not a big deal. It used to be that that was what this country was about, was the connection about the, the feeling like we were together as one and that we were standing up against communism and standing up against uh, socialism and standing up against people that were against our way of life and we would do it together. Uh, World War II, the women, you know, going and, and working and, and helping uh, while the men were over at war, you know, everyone was working in the factories here to get the supplies and the ammunition and tanks and everything that we needed for over there built and planes. And we all were working together. If you weren't involved with that, you brought metals and copper and things like that to different places to be dropped off so they can melt them down and turn them into weapons. It was all about us coming together as a country. Where are we coming together today? I would say that we have the most division I have ever seen in my life. 45 years, I don't think this country has ever been more divided than what it is right now. This country right now is split in two. That's, that's, we've got to change that. That's not going to help this country whatsoever. It's going to continue to drive us further and further deeper into the hole. You know what we've gotten good in this country at is we've gotten good in this country at seeing differences. And if it's something that you're different and we don't like it or we don't understand it, we fear it. Instead of getting to understand why you're different and learning from that of why you're different, instead we run in fear from it and we attack. We need to stop looking at the differences. If we have differences, like I said, we need to learn about it and understand what those differences are and why they're different. But at the same time, we need to stop looking at the differences all the time. We need to start looking at the similarities. That's what I say about our political system right now, is why are you know the Republicans and the Democrats left and right why are they fighting so much when we're all suffering we're all going through a lot of the same issues that need to be addressed let's find some common ground here and figure out how to get ourselves out of this mess we've got people dying daily and all they want to do is fight about a stimulus bill and what it's going to do to the budget. Again, it comes down to money. That's all they care about. Who gives a fuck about the people dying? As long as my pocket is full. It's a sad day, my friends. It is it is bittersweet in my opinion today for my 45th birthday today. I have a feeling of it being bittersweet. And what I mean by that is, it is, it's bittersweet. It is a feeling of, yes, we finally got Trump out and Biden is in, and that really makes me happy. At the same time, 
we're living in a very messed up place right now. People dying everywhere. Police officers are killing innocent people. Got riots happening because of it. We got Antifa doing their chaotic events. You got Proud Boys doing theirs, coming back at them. You got uh, QAnon doing what they're saying, you know, and all the conspiracies that they're with. All the white supremacist groups trying to do their thing. Got the Christian right sitting there thinking that if they were in charge, everything would be okay. That they would they would be able to fix everything. No, you wouldn't. You would make it worse. You can't dictate to people how they're going to live. You cannot say that because I live this way, you are going to live this way. That does not work. Look at countries who do that in dictatorships. Look at the way it worked out for Hitler. Look the way it looks it's working out uh, for, for North Korea. Um, look at the countries that have gone through that dictatorship, Mussolini in Italy. Look at countries that have a dictatorship to where they're dictated how they're going to live and tell me how was the result? How did it end up? How is it ending up? How is it going for those? Doesn't work. You've got to be able to realize that a dictator or, or telling somebody that they need to live this way and then judging them for not does not work. So again, let's stop looking at the differences. Let's stop trying to uh, force people and try to mold people into the way that we want them to look. How about we look at the similarities that we got going on and work together and try to put our heads together and find out what we need to do to get out of it. Too much, too much of this is going on. Too much of the, the finger pointing, the judging. It's time for some unison. You, you know, it's time to be united in this country. It, it, it's time for us to start working together again. A team never works when you have team members that are not on the same page. And, and we have been off the same page for a while now. <laughs> These last four years have done tremendous damage to the welfare of this country. So we're not the best country in the world. We're not. We got a lot of work to even think that we can say that. that we could even imply that. I mean, I don't even really want to to say that stuff because I just, I find it very arrogant. I, I find it very, like, look at us, we're better than you kind of attitude. I don't know. I'm a humanist, okay? I'm a, I'm a secular humanist, and I guess I look for the good that's happening for everybody. Not just this country, other countries as well. And so the idea of just we're the best and you're the worst just, it just seems horrible to me.
I guess I'm just saying, let's stop making people feel bad because they don't necessarily have what we have. Now, I'll agree with that. We do have things that other countries don't have, and we're very fortunate to have those things. But we are not perfect in any way. We are actually, over this last you know few years, we are losing ground on what this country is about. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just tired of being told what, what to do. I guess I'm tired of being told what to think. I guess I'm tired of being told that this is who you should be or this is what you should buy or this is this will make you whole. This will make you who you want to be. This will make you look popular. This will make you look successful. This will make you be the man that you know every woman out there in the world wants to have. This will make you be uh, you know successful in your in your work, in your career. I'm tired of being told what my success should look like. I'm tired of being told that if I don't fit within a certain idea of what I'm supposed to look like, that I am not doing the job, that I am not living life the way that I'm supposed to be living it. Who are you to fucking judge me on that and tell me that? I don't want to be you. I want to be me. I don't want to be anybody else but me. Wouldn't that be what you want? Seriously. Don't you just want to be you and not try to be somebody else to fit in? Let's stop worrying about how we're different and what, and, and, and what our ideas or values of what a person should be. That shouldn't matter. Stop worrying about our differences and let's find a way to unite. Let's find a way to come together and solve these issues that we're going through. Now, my situation, I mean, I live in a sober living home, and I'm house managing it here, and you're going to have many people, many guys coming in of all different backgrounds, different beliefs, different religions, uh, different places that they've come from. Some are poor, some maybe have had more money, uh, some are educated, some not so much, some are young, some are old, I mean, just everything. Some are Christian, some are atheists like me. In a house like this, you've got to be able to work together as a house and again, forget the differences and find the similarities, which with us, it comes to the addiction part of it and how our lives have become unmanageable. And we find ways to work around that and work together as a cohesive unit, living together under the same roof. Why can't we do that in this country? If a bunch of addicts in a house who have been struggling knowing how to live life can come into a situation like this and find a way to be cohesive and work together to better each other under one roof, why can't this country do it? I don't understand. What is stopping us? Get over yourself. You're not that unique. You're not that special. 
that everything has to be done your way or, or it's no way. You selfish assholes. Let's start working with each other a little bit, okay? I'm tired of the division. I'm tired of us thinking that and, and, and the ones that are really doing it are the ones that have no understanding. They've done no research on what they're fucking talking about, but they're sitting there popping off at the fucking mouth. Shut your fucking mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. What? Just because you heard it on the news or some conspiracy theorist nut told you this? And you've done no work or no investigation into it, whether or not it's true or not. You just believe it because someone told you, you naive fuck. Stop being a robot. Stop having people tell you what your mind should think. Stop letting people tell you how your life should look or what you should do with your life. Stop being programmed. You know, there was a movie. Long, 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 long time ago. This country was simpler back then. Charlie Chaplin. He was in a movie called The Last Dictator. It's a great movie. And what's, what's interesting about it is as long as it was ago, over 100 years, or around there, how poignant and how true to the time that we live in today that it applies. It applies to current events that we're going through. And this happened so long ago. It was so ahead of its time, so forward in thinking. Well, I'm going to end it on this today. He gives a speech at the end of it. And I happened to hear it last night when I was doing some research on things. And it just, it sums up my feeling. It sums up how I feel about all of this. It sums up about what I think about the world, about our country, and about the people that are in those, those countries and world, in the world that we live in and what we need to do. And I don't think it can get any better than that. I think it's right on point. So, I'm going to leave you with that. Remember, you can find me, the recovery atheist at gmail.com, and on Facebook, Del Bacon. Take me on the go wherever you go Spotify, Pandora. I'm on the YouTube channel as well for my videos. I just want to leave this last audio with you today. And I just hope you really think about this episode and what we've got to do going in the future. Peace out, everybody. I'm sorry. But I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical. Our cleverness hard and unkind. 
We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people, and so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes, men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines, you are not cattle, you are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke, it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then, in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie, they do not fulfill that promise, they never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason. A world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! Thank you for listening to the Recovery Atheist Podcast. It's now up to you. What will you do with what you've heard? How will you use it? I challenge you not to stay silent. Be heard. Be real. Be different.